Hi all, good afternoon from Barcelona. Welcome to a new Rhino user webinar. I'm Pedro Cortés and we are back uh, with another installment of this video series where we explore exciting workflows involved in Rhino. Today, Ronan Peters and Steven Wolfsart will be focusing on the use of Rhino 3D and Grasshopper to create or modify tech lapping models, uh, especially using the Tecla Light Link. This uh, presentation will include a general overview of the basic components, some recommended reading, and a few use cases for bridge design. Both uh, Ronan and Steven work at SBE and uh, are dedicated to improving bridge design procedures. They start with a central uh, geometric model and utilize uh, Rhino and Grasshopper to speed up the export to both uh, FEM and BIM software. So uh, Steven will be the first one to speak. And uh, as a reminder, we will, be, uh, we will have 15 minutes of Q&A after the presentation to address any questions you may have. So Steven, whenever you are ready. So, yeah, I'm going to start uh, the presentation, but no matter. Um, we'll be uh, talking through uh, Steven's microphone because we are sitting next to each other in the same uh, meeting room. Um, but if it's okay, I will start sharing my screen now. So that should work. Okay. So uh, thank you, Pedro, for this uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Roman Peters, and this is uh, Stephen uh, Walscott. Uh, and uh, in fact, yeah, we'll be talking about the Tecla Live Link. So um, what are we going to talk about? First, a small introduction about our company, ourselves. Uh, and then um, about this webinar, then we'll get uh, into the basics. I'll try and keep that as short as possible so we have some time to explore some uh, examples. So first of all, um, about SBE, we are an engineering company in uh, Belgium and we have around a bit more than 200 employees and we are currently talking to you from our headquarters in St. Niklaas. We are active in these following domains, but if you want to learn more about us, I suggest you go to our website and you'll find more than enough information. And if you're still not satisfied, you can always contact us. Then uh, something about myself. I have been a civil engineer since 2015, and I first worked at some uh, large industrial um, structures, both steel and concrete. Um, but for the last four years, I've been working on um, bridge design and uh, uh, with Rhino and Grasshopper to um, automate and uh, stuff within that uh, parametric uh, design. I'll let Stephen introduce himself right now. Okay, thank you, Rona. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Stephen Waldschart, and uh, I'm working uh, two and a half years with uh, SBE. Uh, I'm currently a knowledge manager uh, for my team uh, in Tecla. Uh, so I yeah, have 12 years experience also in Tecla. Uh, and maybe you know us from, uh, yeah, from uh, uh, Bridges uh, that uh, have won awards with the uh, Consistoft uh, BIM Awards. Uh, and currently we have uh, two uh, projects uh, running uh, in the awards. Uh, if you're interested, you might uh, take a look at, at uh, the BIM Awards. Uh, also, aside from the uh, yeah, knowledge manager of Tecla, I'm also a visual expert at SBE, uh, which implies uh, making uh, you know, the visual um, uh, visualization of the projects for the public, uh, like uh, images, videos, but also uh, VR. Uh, but for today, uh, I will share you my experience uh, as a BIM engineer and present you an example of a grasshopper uh, with Tecla. So I will give back uh, the words to Ronan. Thanks, Steve. Um, so then about this webinar, um, our goal is a bit uh, to demonstrate how we use the Tecla Live Link. Um, from my part as an engineer, I make my uh, whole geometry um, in a Rhino and Grasshopper as a single source of geometry. And then I uh, export it to uh, both uh, engineering software um, to make uh, calculations and uh, to BIM software to uh, make drawings. 
it's also an excellent point for an architect to uh, check whether everything is um, as um, desired. So the why do I use the single source of geometry? It avoids double work, miscommunication, and errors, or human errors, that is. Then um, that's really the rhino side. The grasshopper side is to make a model parametric, and that can really increase efficiency in case you have a complex uh, geometry that is formula-based or uh, is hard to draw by hand, let's say. Um, we'll see an example of that. Um, when you have a high repetition rate, when you can reuse your code a lot of times, or when you have uh, an uncertain input, which is yeah, in, in our uh, business uh, quite often um, that a, a client decides he wants something to change throughout uh, the design. Uh, and then more from the engineering side of things is that when you have a parametric model, you can easily change uh, things. So you can evaluate a lot of variants, which automatically leaves, leads to uh, a more optimized solution. So um, more about Tecla. Uh, Tecla, for me, it's... Uh, yeah, uh, like any other BIM software, it's just geometry uh, and attributes that we add. Um, and I made a small table uh, from how I perceive the BIM elements. So in, in, in my perception, there are only three of them. Uh, at the highest level, we have the beams, which is in geometry, nothing more than a line or a curve on which you have some attributes, which is minimal uh, and a cross-section, so a 2D to make it a 3D element, and then a material. I think that's the least you should have. You can also add other attributes like finishing, manufacturer, certificates, or yeah, anything else you can come up with. But in my opinion, um, a material and a cross-section should be uh, minimum there. Then if you can model it with a beam, then you uh, have plates or slabs, which are surfaces. So 2D elements on which you uh, add a thickness to make it 3D again. And then again, a uh, material. And then the items are really in geometry already the 3D item as you want it and uh, with a material. And in my opinion, you should stay as high as possible in this table because uh, like many BIM softwares, um, also, Tecla provides more um, in-depth uh, adjustments uh, or possible adjustments to plates and beams uh, than it does for items. Items are quite fixed um, within the, the model. So let's have a look. Um, I made an empty Tecla model. Uh, and then you know, I'll uh, have to go back and forth because my screen isn't... Uh, wide enough to uh, to show everything at once um, but let's go to the basic components first so what did i prepare just something yeah a 3d curve and if i run uh, the standard beam uh, components in grasshopper you see that i get a beam and it has yeah how can I minimalize this? Okay. Um, if I show you the properties, you see that it is a steel beam. It has been assigned some uh, default attributes. And in my case, that's an HEA 300. But uh, yeah, apparently the standard of uh, TechLab doesn't recognize this profile. Uh, no matter, we'll uh, change that in a minute. And the material is an undefined steel. Okay. Um, then you can also create uh, a concrete beam. And really, yeah, it just has some other default uh, attributes. And also, you, if you check the, the custom properties, you see that you have for the uh, concrete element, you can uh, add attributes like concrete cover in a standardized way. And if you go to the steel element, you will see that you have. Uh, much less attributes to add. Okay, that was for beams, really obvious. We can do the same for plate elements. So um, for a planner surface, 
if I run this and I go to uh, Tech Lab, you see that it made a steel uh, plate and a concrete slab. Everything as expected. Um, but if I have a non planar surface like this one that I've drawn right here, there's a bit of a delay. Um, the streaming is the stream really still coming through? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this uh, non planar surface, if I just input it like this, it doesn't give any error. No, it doesn't give any warning, but it has made planar surface in Tecla. So it has adjusted the geometry behind the scenes without an, uh, a warning. So that's something to, to bear in mind that this can happen. So always check that. Um, so when you have this uh, long planar surface and you can't really draw it as a plate or a slab, you should go to an item. And that is exactly what I did. I extruded it to make it a volume. And let me just run this real quick. Uh, yeah, you can see that it's right here. And really important is here the show internal lines in Tecla because um, I've just um, imported a, a combination of surfaces, a closed prep. And uh, Tecla has meshed this. Uh, behind the scenes for me, which can be perfect, but it can also be um, quite, yeah, unsuccessful at doing so, like like this. This is perhaps a bit too easily meshed. Then you can um, mesh it within Rhino. Rhino, give, Rhino and Grasshopper give you a lot of options to mesh it yourself. And then you, if you imp implement a mesh as a geometry, it automatically takes over that mesh. So something to bear in mind. And afterwards, if you have checked your mesh and you're uh, happy with it, you can um, uh, check off this box that it doesn't show internal lines. And then you should see that, yeah, the internal lines of, of this element have been removed from uh, visual representations. Same goes for concrete elements, so I'm not really going to stop uh, with that. I've also prepared a small um, example for a reinforcement into this uh, concrete element. But it's, yeah, something that I don't often use as exported from Grasshopper into Tecla. So, um, Reinforcement, you can do it. We don't really often do it uh, in any way. Um, perhaps I'll just uh, go over the catalogs and attributes. Perhaps first I'll uh, show you where you can find all these blocks that I used. So the, um, you have the Tecla uh, category and the subcategory steel. You will find the steel beams uh, and the steel uh, plates and items. Um, if in the subcategory concrete, you will find all the um, concrete beams, slabs, and items. Then there is a subcategory edit attributes. Yeah, we'll come to that later. Perhaps I won't be able to go over everything because of time limitations. Um, but the catalog catalogs can be really helpful because they yeah they dive into what you have um, as a, a library in Tecla. So let's just uh, uh, select one, okay. And if I put it into the profile that didn't exist earlier, it should have changed it. So right now we have like a cross-section uh, drawn on it. Oh my God, yes. Okay, then uh, the material catalog really works the same way. So I currently have a steel material uh, in that. I can add it to an attribute, a part attribute, 
component. And if I link this, this is something that I wanted to show as well. Um, if I link this to a concrete beam, then the concrete beam becomes a steel beam because it is linked to a steel material. However, when I do the same for the concrete slab, that should be this one. Uh, it's, it is also, it has changed the material to a steel that is undefined, but it has remained a concrete slab. So the properties of the concrete will still be present. Something unusual, but it's uh, something worth mentioning, I think. And what you always should use is the positioning um, of, uh, um, of your elements. So you have, yeah, let me try to split my screen in a way that it is noticeable. So you have like your reference line and how your, uh, how your beam is uh, related to that reference line. You can just uh, pick any position or you can give it some um, in plane positions. You can rotate it like this. So that's really, can be really helpful as well. Okay. So, yeah, I've also uh, wanted to share that if you, uh, you're working with reinforcements, then you should yeah, be aware that there are a lot of attributes to add because you need to um, give it some uh, attributes to define how it is numbered, um, how the end conditions will be, so the hooks uh, or the shape of the hooks, uh, the cover uh, of the concrete, and of course, the, the spacing of the rebar group. So there's a lot um, of data that you need to input uh, right there. And yeah, that's it for the basic uh, blocks, I would say. Then there's one thing that I uh, wanted to uh, show as well, which are the, the components, which can be really helpful if you're, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to connect steel uh, beams or, or, yeah, actually there are, I think, a lot of uh, components available in uh, Tecla, which is really uh, a strength uh, of Tecla. But you can also steer them uh, from uh, Grasshopper. So what I usually do is uh, to, to um, make it manageable. Uh, I do it first time manually. Um, I can fill out the, the values that I want here, right here, or I can give it default values, which I know won't be used uh, anywhere else in the in these default attributes. So 98, 99, uh, perhaps that's too much. Then it won't uh, draw anything like that. Okay. And then I need to pick a main part and a secondary part. Okay. And you see that he has made uh, an angle cleave for me. And I'm going to um, I'm going to reference that Tecla component so I, I can reference it back. And you see that, that it, it's the connection, you can deconstruct it, this component, and then you get the component name and also all the attributes that you uh, added in that. And then whether you used all the attributes that you want to copy to other uh, connections, or if, you're, um, if you have uh, inserted default values, which you want to change uh, inside of Grasshopper, you can search for your values that you inserted. So, um, let me search for what I inputted. There should be an 18 and a 19 somewhere. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they seem to have uh, been lost. No, um, try to take the, the components from the, from the, the cutouts. 
Yeah, I've often to rerun the script uh, and input the different values. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't input the values right. Sorry. Thankfully, there is Stephen who can uh, help me. So, yeah, you see that. Um, there are. Uh, Should refresh it. Yeah. Refresh the algorithm. Okay, yeah. Here is the 18, the 32. Yeah, sorry for the delay. <laughs> um, but then you can start uh, adjusting these attribute files and you can link them back. Um, so if right now I would say uh, copy the data only, and I will copy it into this uh, text block. I can delete it from, from here. And uh, is it the right one? Yes. So right now, it has the default um, parameters or the default attributes. But if I link in this text file, those should be changed and you should find the same values as we did before again. So that's really how that works. Um, also worth noting is that the main part and the secondary part are not always uh, yeah, the necessary component inputs. So I'll just open one. And if you don't link anything into the name, it, it doesn't really have uh, the, the same amount of uh, inputs in Grasshopper, but if you link something to it, it uh, when it recognizes a component, then it will automatically give you a main part and a secondary parts. Or um, I think in another case, you, uh, uh, yeah, this is for a, a staircase, um, which only needs um, a point. But it will just ask for a plugin input, and then it's important to uh, link in this uh, extra block, being the plugin input, um, before uh, inserting the points. Because if you uh, put it directly into the component, it will not recognize it. So you have to put it like this. And then let's have a look. I just made uh, a staircase like this, um, which wasn't too much work. Um, then, yeah, when you reach the limits of this, I, um, it's not often that we reach the limits of uh, the Tecla Live, like, but sometimes we, we want to set a base point from a, a reference to Rhino model or something. Um, you can always use the Tecla API to get uh, coding yourself. So um, just go to the developer tecla.com. Uh, and go to the Tecla Open API API references. And I'm not much of a programmer, but to set uh, a base point into uh, the Tecla software is just really easy. Um, just a little bit of code. The same goes for um, phases that you can add or modify uh, phases. Just a couple of lines of code and, and it will be working for you. Um, so you can automate the boring stuff. Okay, that's it for the basics. Let's get into uh, an example. Um, and this example is um, a pedestrian bridge uh, that I worked on uh, some time ago. And the architect wanted, um, yeah, an organic whole pattern in, inside uh, of the the wall plates so let me just yeah show it like this um it's hard to visualize in, in such a small screen but you see that there are uh there is actually a cutout pattern that is based on random values um, it's nothing more than a couple of shapes of triangles, and on each position, it chooses whether it uh, takes uh, no uh, perforation, the smallest one, the middle one, or the largest one. 
Um, I'm not going to go into the structural details of it, um, but I made sure that it has a, some structural sense so where the plate is necessary. It is, of course, a structural plate, so we cannot cut it anywhere. Um, but where the plates are really necessary, there will be less or no holes. Um, but where it is less uh, effective, there can be larger and more uh, cutouts. Um, then the first iteration was really the architect that um, took a 2D surface and started drawing uh, a triangle by triangle. Um, and then I got it and I had to make sure that all my diaphragms, um, I think they're spaced like every four meters or something, uh, they didn't cross any of these perforations because it would really look uh, bad. And yeah, it didn't work out because it was uh, not easy to uh, do it. Um, so what I did is I, I made it, uh, I made a, an organic pattern myself uh, in grasshopper. So let us have a look at what Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I created a line, which is a uh, which is all these uh, cutouts. Uh, segmented uh, after each other. I made, I uh, performed uh, a flow or an, a smorph uh, and put it into the uh, rectangles that uh, I wanted it to be. And then I needed to uh, cut out all these holes, which is in Rhino and Grasshopper fairly easy to do. But in uh, Tecla, you need, uh, it, it does take uh, somewhat more care. Um, so how did I achieve this? First of all, when you um, export the geometry, the surface, even with the holes in it, so it can be a perforated surface, uh, Tecla will recognize uh, only the um, outline. Wait, I'll just delete everything from earlier. Um, it will just take the outlines. So uh, these are the plates that I have. And important to mention, if you right click the components, then uh, you have a maximum number of control points, which is uh, standard at 99. Uh, but if you're going to insert a lot of uh, holes in it, then uh, 99 won't be sufficient. So uh, I am, um, yeah, I put it to 999 control points. So that shouldn't be a problem right now. Then uh, I've created all these perforations as plates again, which are a little bit thicker than um, uh, the wall plates. So right now there are two elements on top of each other. And with the part cut, I can cut out the whole pattern out of the plates. So that's what is happening right here. Um, and what is important to, to mention is that your tree structure must be exact because otherwise uh, it will not uh, try and cut out the right triangles with the right plates. So let's have a look at what's happening right now. It's, it has performed this operation, runs rather smoothly. Let's activate the other one. OK. So there is that. So this was, yeah, I think, quite an easy way to um, get all these perforations. Let's just at the rest of the bridge also in Tecla. So we have something like this. Um, so now we have the entire bridge in Tecla. And what is also really helpful, because I talked about the uncertainty of input, as a manufacturer, he needed to uh, redraw the bridge with a pre-camber in it. So he had to uh, move all those uh, triangles and yeah, he, re he really had a hard time doing so. 
Um, so as a courtesy, we asked him to give us an, a new alignment with a pre-camber in it. And we re-ran the script uh, to make all these perforations shift uh, along with the pre-camber. And it worked out nicely. And I think more or less it comes as, yeah, the entire design that you see here is just based on this axis. Let's say if I um, first bake it to, yeah, that's not really what I wanted to do, but okay, I want to bake it. And let's say when I change some points, I'm currently moving them in the X and Y plane. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's set one curve. Then let's take this broken one. A little bit of patience. <laughs> Okay. So you, you see that it, it redraws the bridge. It's a little bit funky, I admit. Um, but also in, in Tecla, everything is just updating. Um, so you, you have to give it some time to make all these uh, cutouts because, yeah, it, uh, it's a lot of uh, calculation. But, okay, I myself didn't have to put too much effort in this. Uh, and that's really the strength uh, of uh, Rhino Grasshopper uh, along with Tecla, because that's really the point of this webinar is that you use the strength of um, both these softwares. Um, and th with that, I will conclude my uh, part of this presentation um, and I will give the word to uh, Stephen. Okay, so let's uh, change the screens here. Uh, See. Yeah, do my yeah. Okay, I'm going on it. Yes. Okay. Good. So, uh, thank you, Rona, <laughs> for your first uh, explain, explanation about the components. So, uh, I will show you a small example um, of what you can do with the uh, Tecla Grasshopper. Um, so, uh, what Ronan just did was uh, create a model from uh, Grasshopper with uh, the parameters uh, directly in Grasshopper, but that's not always the, the uh, a must. So you can also take uh, the information from Takla uh, and uh, yeah, import it in Grasshopper and then use that to uh, modify the model. Um, so. Okay, so this is uh, the model that I want to show you today. Um, so this is a, a work in progress model uh, made uh, by my colleague, and there are still some connections uh, still to need uh, to be made. Uh, I highlighted them in blue and yellow, so that's obvious um, which points are still uh, need to, to be worked out. Like uh, for in this example, uh, we still need to add uh, the um, uh, the base plates uh, on the columns and so on. Um, okay, so how do I uh, get to that point? Um, so what you can do is, is uh, yeah, have your uh, Tecla model open and use, uh, let's see, um, yeah, in your Grasshopper, the Tecla, the parameter uh, beams, and then you would uh, select them uh, in your model. I already have them selected here, uh, so like this. Um, yeah. Um, so um, yeah, I, I will um, tell you a bit, little bit of a history about how we normally uh, draw this in Tecla. So at the first point, um, we will yeah, just drop the main beams in Tecla, and later on we get the information from the engineer um, which connections we need to, to um, yeah, detail between the beams. And yeah, that was a, a lot of manual work, so you had to uh, look up, uh, figure out where the connection is, uh, and so on. Now, for a small uh, model, it's not really a big problem, but if you go bigger and bigger, uh, then yeah, it's a little bit of a, a puzzle uh, 
puzzling to find the locations. So um, then, yeah, of course, with the grasshopper, we could uh, uh, make this better by um, taking the a spreadsheet, uh, like um, I can show you here. Uh, oh, did I? Yeah. So, so this is an example of a, of a spreadsheet and be imported into Grasshopper. Um, so the spreadsheet would contain the connection that uh, was provided by the engineer and the location uh, with uh, yeah, other uh, parameters. And so we used this uh, information and uh, drew a note on the location. And that way we could find out like, oh, here is this uh, connection uh, VP3, for example. Um, but uh, the power of uh, Grasshopper uh, lets you go even further by actually taking this information and just uh, filter the the, uh, the model and, and make the connection with Grasshopper itself. So this is what I will show you here. Um, yeah, so I've showed you before, uh, this model is the smallest, but you can imagine uh, like a bigger project where you have like 20 times uh, one type of connection uh, yeah. anywhere in the model and you need to find out what it is. But with this, you just uh, make the, the module and run it for this connection and it's it's drawn in the, in the model. Okay, let's go back to uh, Grasshopper. So, um, so I will tell you about the, the basic uh, understanding of how, how we go from here. So we have the, the linked beams and with the beams, we extract the information uh, like the lines, uh, we, which we will use to um, filter the model to see uh, yeah, which, which beam is closest to the location given by the engineer. Uh, other than that, we also make a structure um, of the beams so that we can use uh, to aid uh, yeah, which, which beams need to connect it uh, with each other. Um, so that's uh, what's shown here. And then we'll uh, make uh, show you the first example. So there are um, two types of modules in this uh, model. And the first one is, is uh, yeah, the base plate. And for the base plate, we only need, and this is the base plate, we only need the main beam, as you can see here, and which is filtered by uh, by the, the, you know, the connection VB1. And it says uh, it wants to look for the HGB 180s. And then uh, we have the following input from the location of the list, uh, as you can see there, uh, where, where the, the, you know, the base plate needs to be allocated. So when I then activate my component, he just draws the, the, the detail um, in Tecla. So uh, what I need to, um, yeah, forgot to tell you before, is that we have to draw the, the component one time before, and then just we put it in the, in the right uh, configuration as described by the engineer, and then we just save it uh, uh, in the list uh, with the same name from the, yeah, from the spreadsheet. And then we can uh, run the component. Uh, it will look like, oh, is there a component that names like this? And you will uh, generate in the model. So we have the VP1 now. So we have the four locations as shown in here. And then we have for the VB2, the, the other uh, columns next to it. Um, uh, we have six uh, values. And then we just uh, run these and all six uh, columns uh, received this um, yeah, detail. So that was for the, the base plate, but uh, the, the other module, uh, we have yeah, two connecting parts, the two beams connected to each other. And we have uh, the haunch uh, uh, connection. So this is this, this one. So this is a VB3. Uh, so, as you can see in the list, uh, BB3, these locations, and then we will look for the, the information which type of uh, beam it is in the spreadsheet. 
Uh, we then uh, yeah, run the, the filter and so on, and then we actually get the, the beams uh, selected, connecting. Uh, as you can see also, this is in uh, Rhino itself, we can see these are the parts that get selected, and these are the locations that it's trying to look for, for the connections VB3. And then we run this part, it made six connections, and these are then inserted into the model. Um, okay, so yeah, it's, it's uh, apart from that, uh, we can uh, continue the list uh, for VB4. Uh, so we just run the script uh, and we see in the model they are connected, connecting here. Uh, and this is done for five, uh, yeah, six, like this. Seven. So yeah, this is a uh, yeah example I wanted to show you how to use uh, the grasshopper to connect uh, you know, the beams in the, in the model. So I think um, this is uh, it for the my example. So uh, I hope uh, I could inspire you. Um, it is an example uh, and what Ronan showed you today and to enhance your daily work routine and uh, help you, you get down the, uh, the boring stuff and have more free time to do the fun stuff. And so, okay, thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we can go to the Q&A, uh, Pedro. amazing work uh, behind this. Um, yeah, is there any questions from the audience? Okay, in the meantime, I have one for you. So uh, I saw how you define uh, the main design in Rhino and move the geometry to Tecla, but uh, have you ever tried to define the structure in Rhino and move this geometry into Tecla as a structure again? Um, so in, in what way uh, do you have you in mind? The, yeah, the... for, for example, uh, if you are working on Rhino trying to define the, the beams mm -hmm. and then bring these beams into Tecla as uh, native elements. Okay. Is it, yeah. is it possible? Uh, well, I think uh, if you draw it in Rhino, it's just the same as as um, how it's shown here in in, uh, in Grasshopper. Uh, you just draw the 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 hot line of, yeah. the, of, the, of the profiles, and then okay. you, you give the yeah. what you can do is, for example, uh, filter the the hot lines with uh, yes. I will try to increase this here. And let's see if I can. And then you, you you give them layers and name them from which beams they need to be, and then you can order them in your uh, grasshopper script, for example, uh, which beam is which uh, profile, and then you create the beams inside uh, the same way as we did now. When uh, if you can you can do uh, in your grasshopper. Yeah, it's really, I think the workflow shows that you can uh, extract all the data that is in your Tecla model um, and, and then start filtering uh, everything by um, direction of the beams, cross section of the beams, um, yeah, position uh, of the beams. And then, yeah, if you uh, filter it in enough ways, you can uh, group them again. Uh, to get it for one type of uh, cross-section and then uh, you can uh, send the information back. Um, of course, it's also a possibility to just start in, in Rhino and then export everything, um, but that's not always possible because sometimes um, other people, other companies, other colleagues, or um, they give us input that is uh, either in Tecla or something uh, else entirely, and then we try to start from that again to avoid um, redoing everything. 
so it, it's really uh, also an, an important link to, to go from uh, BIM software back into Rhino, where we can uh, use Grasshopper to, to automate um, certain uh, yeah. Yeah, manipulations. So which are uh, the, the common uh, inputs you have before starting modeling in the cloud? Um, the common inputs that we get? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you start from, from Rhino yeah. or from TechLab files? Most of us start from TechLab. Okay. It's, yeah. So it's not common throughout. Uh, our company or I think other companies as well to start from uh, Rhino. Everybody's you know, more uh, acquainted with uh, starting in, in the BIM software, um, but it doesn't really have the, the parametric uh, back layer that, that Grasshopper has to Rhino. Um, and that's why we uh, we tend to use the, the import and export uh, in, in Rhino and Grasshopper. Well, we got a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, Chris, uh, welcome, please. Uh, ask a question to Steven. Uh, what if the matrix of inputs will change? For example, extra levels and numeration will change. How to have a control over this matrix? Okay, so... Uh... Let's see. So, because uh, we are referencing the, the beams from in the model, uh, yeah, the, the labels and the, the material and, and so on will stay the same. Of course, if you manipulate the beam, yeah, it will ask to renumber your your you know, your part, your your beam and all. But yeah, if, if your your uh, adjustment is the same for every same uh, same beam. Then the, the numbers will stay the same. And so as you understand, is that when if something deviates from the original and there is still an original version like that, then yeah, of course the the, the adjusted beam will change uh, uh, as uh, to a different uh, number, uh, which is yeah, logical. Chris has another question to Ronan in this case. Uh, how drawings were made for these perforating barriers? Have you used Grasshopper Rhino or just the cloud? Yeah, um, we we used uh, just the cloud, but perhaps uh, it was a project uh, of uh, me and Stephen, and uh, actually uh, Stephen did the drawings uh, for this. So uh, perhaps uh, ask the expert himself how did you uh, make the drawings for uh, uh, the pedestrian bridge from the perforations? Um, yeah. Oh, for the perforations itself, or just in general, the bridge? Uh, the perforations is the, the question specifically. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for, I just made the, the drawing overview for it, but I was uh, just uh, the plan views and just side views of it. Nothing special about it, because uh, we didn't do the, the draft uh, the drawings for, for that. So yeah, the, the drawings weren't made from Rhino. They were just made in Tecla. So mm -hmm. when once the three D model was inside of Tecla, uh, then then the yeah the um, the formatting of the the drawings themselves were just only Tecla work. Um, that's something that we're not really into uh, yet uh, about steering the drawings from uh, Rhino and Grasshopper, um, but that is certainly uh, an interesting way of thinking. Um, so uh, it, it is a possibility because there, are, there is development into uh, Grasshopper and drawing generation, but it's still uh, yeah. in the infancy of around three six. And <laughs> work in progress, <laughs> let's say. Okay. Yeah, relating to this question about the drawings, uh, Ong Wei Xi has uh, another question. Is it possible to have the cut section at the segment basis when the bridge is curved? Wait, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand correctly. What is it possible to? Uh, is it possible to have the cut section 
at the segment faces when the bridge is curved? So, so it, um, it is the question that I had a polyline um, to which the, the curve was referenced. Um, yeah, actually, I based my script um, uh, on, on a curved line, uh, but uh, it took um, a point at every uh, diaphragm, every four meters, and then I created the polyline from it. And the reason for that is more or less to make a menu, uh, to make the life of the manufacturer a, a little less hard because perfectly uh, bent plates, they aren't possible. They are always a bit triangulated. Um, and yeah, that way you don't draw something that is impossible to make. Um, that's also yeah something that we uh, so, some experience of ours that we made a very complex shape and we made a drawing of it to be yeah millimeter perfect uh, let's say but a manufacturer wasn't able to make it like that um, so then that's yeah that's uh, really a choice you have to make and we decided that we start yeah from a, a realistic. Uh, view of things so that when you visualize anything for an architect as well, they really know how it is going to look and you don't uh, present them with a picture perfect uh, that is never going to happen. Okay. And uh, Luis Fernandez wants to know uh, if uh, the Tecla Grasshopper Link have any blocks to automate drawing production? Um, not yet, I think, um, drawing production. I uh, think, yes, that's the thing I said, there, there, there is a development in it, uh, but it's still not really uh, that the uh, Tecla Live Link set, uh, itself uh, presents to us, but it, it does exist. Yeah, well, how we do it right now, it's, yeah. it's a really skewed bridge and you want to predefine uh, a couple of um, sections um that we just uh, export uh, a working plane or uh, a plate uh, non-visual plate in in the, the 3d model to which uh, a view can be referenced um yeah i know it, it's a workaround but yeah it is what it is right now and uh, perhaps the future will bring uh, more possibilities yeah for sure and uh, another question, one more question. Uh, have you connected this steel structure to any FEM software? If yes, which one? And um, what is your experience? To, to connect it to FEM. FEM. It's an element software. That's um, the engineering side for uh, oh. this project. We didn't, um, but I've worked uh, with Stephen on a lot of projects. Uh, in, uh, in, yeah. The <laughs> um, and uh, we we did have some projects where uh, I yeah exported the Tecla um, uh, from or the, the Tecla geometry uh, into Rhino and then I exported it to uh, Sophistic Structural Desktop again. Um, but a lot of other uh, softwares are possible. I think uh, SIA Engineer uh, has a link uh, from Grasshopper as well, um, and perhaps some other software. Um, but yeah, I can only talk about the softwares that we use um, at our company, and that's uh, Sophistic and SIA. Uh, Rico Polditz mentions that uh, he knows there is a maximum of 99 items you can mark in Tecla using the Tecla Live game. Uh, your last example only had 83 items. Is there a way to mark more items than 99? Do you know this limitation? The the maximum of 99 items or the the does uh, that refer to the the control points of the the, the plates? No, if, if he really means items, uh, or the item count can be higher, I think, than, uh, than 99, because we have a project in which we uh, 
Yeah. Well, then there is a no problem that when you have too much items or unused items, that then some anomalies happen. But yeah, perhaps you can show that. I think your screen is still shared. Um, that that's yeah. I can share mine again. Let's have a look. Um, and that's you know perhaps also uh, something important to show. How do I? <laughs> yeah, here you have um, some um, uh, options for the, the entire Tecla link, um, which are really helpful. But the delete unused shapes is also very important because uh, if you uh, have a lot of um, changes in your items in Tecla, it can leave a, a long list of um, items in the the shapes and the shape geometry folder um, and if they're unused it can yeah clutter your view and some uh, items won't be shown again so you can just delete unused shapes and you see that it deleted three unused shapes uh, in the current um, model that i have because i have created three uh, items i've deleted them again but they were still uh, you know, slumbering in my uh, shapes and shape geometry uh, folders. And right now they're deleted. So that's something yeah, that can uh, really bother you if you have a lot of shapes. Um, since we're talking about this tab, uh, you can also uh, enable and disable uh, all Tecla components at once because sometimes you don't want to have them enabled all the time. Um, so that when you open a, a model that everything is rerunning, it can take a lot of time or sometimes it can just uh, yeah, redraw geometry that you uh, actually didn't want uh, updated yet. Um, so this is, um, yeah, you can delete all objects in, in Tecla. Yeah, th there's really uh, some powerful stuff in, in this tab as well. Good. Well, uh, we think uh, we ran out of time. So, Ronan, Steven, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations again on your presentation and your hard work behind it. And uh, thank you very much for being here. Okay. Bye. So, yeah, thank okay. you. And to the audience, uh, I'll see you in the in the next webinars. Okay. See you. Okay. Thank bye. you, Pedro. And bye. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs>